So welcome to Faith and Trust in God, our weekly study of Chovos Halavavos, uh, which is duties of the heart. Um, and we have been on a journey in this fourth gate, the gate of trust, to develop exercises and uh, uh, guidelines for how we can um, reaffirm and practice this, this trust in our own lives. So last week we ended chapter three, and today we begin chapter four. And um, we've mentioned this before in this class, but I'll mention it again just in case. At the, uh, at the risk of being repetitive, that Rabbeinu Bechaya Ibn Pakuda is extremely structured in the way that he, uh, that, he, that he presents his case in this book. And if you haven't noticed it yet, I encourage you to see that pattern throughout. He'll lay down, you know, seven rules and then break them down one at a time and explain them to us, to, to us one at a time. He'll lay down seven prerequisites, three rules, five reasons, whatever it is, and then he'll kind of give us you know, the, the step-by-step as we, as we go through it. So today, starting a new chapter, chapter four, he lays down seven concerns in which one is bound to trust in God. In other words, the way I like to put it is, till now we might have been discussing why we should trust in God, how we should trust in God, right? Things like that. Today we're discussing regarding what should we trust God, right? Should I trust God that, I don't know, that the heavens are not going to fall down on my head, right? Like what? What is it that we're so busy trusting Hashem about, right? Right. It's no big deal to trust Hashem, uh, uh, whether he'll revert the world back to nothingness. I would hope we all trust him in that regard. Like that's, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't interfere with my life for the most part, right? Because either that happens or it doesn't happen. I don't, I don't worry about that on a day-to-day basis. So what are the seven categories, the seven concerns in which one is bound to trust in God? Um, Lisa, you want to get us started? Okay. Um. Can you hear me on this? Yep, we hear you. Go for it. Right. Okay. Uh, chapter four, the concerns in which the believer is obligated to rely on the creator, may he be exalted, are of two kinds, those of this world and those of the world to come. Okay. And now he further divides them. Go ahead. Those of this world can be divided into two parts. Worldly mat- One, worldly matters for the benefit of this world, and two, Worldly matters for the benefit of the world to come. Okay, so just some examples here. Worldly matters for the benefit of this world would be um, eating, drinking, sleeping, right? Um, Worldly matters for the benefit of the world to come would be doing a mitzvah, helping someone else, these kind of things. Even though they might be worldly, right? So remember, they are items in this world, there are things happening in this world about the world that will affect the world to come. Okay, keep going, Lisa. Right. um, We're at the top now. Okay. Worldly matters for the benefit of this world can be divided into three parts. The welfare of one, uh, okay. One, the welfare of one's, one's own body. Two, the interests of one's livelihood and the sources of one's wealth and various possessions. Okay, so in, in English, let's call those health and wealth. Okay. okay. Or health and sustenance or health and livelihood. Go ahead. Number okay. three. At three, the welfare of one's household, spouse, and relatives, friends, and enemies, those above him and those below him among the different classes of people. Thank you. So we, so, and, and, and like, I, like I said, he's going to go through each of these one at a time. So I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but just like that, we have a cursory understanding of it. Um, number one was the welfare of one's own body, health, right? That is a worldly matter that only benefits one in this world, right? We don't have a body in the world to come. We're talking about here about the world of souls, right? So when we say worldly matters for the benefits of this world, they can be divided into three categories. Category number one is physical things that we do for our own body. How, in, in, in a nutshell, I would call that health. Of course, that can be further broken down. I mean, we're already like three steps into breaking things down, but that can be broken down even further, you know, exercise and, and, uh, and, and, um, and, and uh, diet and... Uh, um, uh, abuse to the body and sleep and all sorts of things, right? All of those things are going to be things that are worldly matters that are for the benefit of this world that we are going to trust in Hashem for. So that's for the welfare of one's own body. Number two is the interest of one's livelihood, right? Where we get money from, how we support ourselves, right? How, okay. Number three is very interesting. The welfare, not just of ourselves, but we all know this. Um, before I continue... Let me just put things in perspective here for a second. All the things we're talking about today are all things that you can put into the category of what do I worry about? 
he's not putting it that way, of course. He's saying, what do I have to trust in Hashem for? Right? But what are things that we worry about? Like I said, nobody here, at least hopefully, worries that the world is going to revert to nothingness. That's not something we spend our waking hours worrying about. Right? I mean, hopefully. A healthy person doesn't, doesn't spend their, 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 their minutes, their, their waking hours, uh, uh, figuring out how... Uh, how uh, we have an in-person uh, student. It's Steve our Harwitz. natural talent to be worried about everything. There you go. Steve Horowitz is here, everybody. Oh, Say hello. hello. They don't know what you look like because you're always... Well, he always has his camera off, and now he's wearing a mask. We finally see him, and he's wearing a mask. <laughs> this is Steve Horowitz. He's, he's here every week, usually on Zoom. <laughs> All right. So, or I know it's a bad Rem time. Remember, remember, Robert, they said that if Jewish person wake up in the morning and doesn't feel worry, he feels guilty. Exactly. Okay, so, so what are those things that we worry about? Those things are, we worry about what's happening in this world. We worry about what's happening in the world to come. Again, a healthy person. I understand some people, they just live in the physical world. They say, well, we're talking about a normal, regular Jew. Worries what's going to happen in this world, what's going to be after I die, right? Um, uh, and the things in this world are split. They're split between our health, our, our, our wealth, let's call it, right, livelihood. And number three is the people around us, because that's the way we are. I mean, Baruch Hashem, it's a beautiful part of the way God created us, but we worry about our spouses, we worry about our household, we worry about our relatives, and yes, we worry about our friends and enemies. Now, we might wish well to our friends and unwell to our enemies, but we worry about what's going to be with them, right? What is, the, what is going on? What, what's going to be with their bodies and with their uh, uh, health and with their uh, livelihood, etc.? Okay, and now we move on. Arnold, you want to take over here? Worldly matters for the benefit of the world to come can be divided into two parts. Number one. <clears throat> so again, these are things we do in this world. Okay. And those things affect um, uh, the, the, the world to come in some way. So they divide into two categories. You're going to love these two categories. We speak about them almost every week. Go ahead. Okay, the first category is duty of, duties of the heart and of the limbs no, that relate exclusively to oneself, affecting no one else, either for benefit or for harm. And number two, duties of the limbs that can be discharged only in association with another person, one of them active, the other passive, such as the practice of charity, acts of kindness, teaching wisdom, exhortation to right conduct, and warning against evil. Okay, so now worldly matters, which means things we do in this world, which are going to affect the world to come, also get divided into two categories, right? You're the category of, very simply put, these are the duties of the heart and the duties of the limbs that we talk about almost every week. When, when I introduce the class, very often I'll say the title of the book, Duties of the Heart, is as opposed to Duties of the Limbs. Rabbi Nebuchai in his introduction says that he felt that there were too, not too much, but there was not enough literature, there was plenty of literature, literature on duties of the limbs, had to put on tefillin, how to love your neighbor, how to visit the sick, etc., and not enough emphasis or not enough literature put on the duties of the heart, right? So here he's reminding us that in this world, we can do two things, or at least two categories of things, right? Duties of the heart, loving God, loving, loving, uh, uh, loving, uh, let's not talk about loving your fellow, because when he divides these two, he divides them into duties of the heart and duties of the limbs, but he also divides them into things that are more self-effective, meaning they affect us, and things that affect um, the world around us. So duties of the heart would be loving God, fearing God, uh, uh, um, uh, trusting in Hashem, all these things that we always discuss as things that we're obligated to do with our heart, believing in God, etc. Duties of the limbs are more like, of course, to fill in Shabbos, kosher, things like that, but also things that affect the people around us, right? Things that we do with our bodies that can affect people around us, whether that's hitting other people, stealing from other people um, in, in the negative, and in the positive, helping other people and, and lend, lending money to other people, etc. These are the two categories that are in this world, but they affect the world to come. Last category, remember we had three categories. So, so far we have three and two, so we're at five. And the two categories of the world to come can be divided into two parts. So the two things that we worry about, which we can't do anything about in this world. Okay, Marguerite, you want to read for us? Okay. Okay. Concerns, concerns of the world to come can be divided in two parts. First, reward that is deserved, and second, reward that the Creator may be He exalted out of His grace bestows on the pious and prophets in the hereafter. Thank you. That Thank you. 
uh, Marguerite for reading for us. And so therefore we get two more categories, which are, again, they don't happen in this world. They only happen in the world to come, but we spend plenty of time worrying about them in this world, which are reward. Of course, that's what happens. We're talking about spiritual interaction with our neshama, with our soul in the world of souls, right? But they can be, again, they can be divided into two parts, which are the, um, the, the things that, we are, that, that, we, that are direct result of our actions, right? So we're always told, uh, um, do good things in this world, and then that will, you get reward, you get star for that, spiritual revelations, etc. in the world to come. But then there are things in that world of souls, there are things that we, we are completely undeserving of. It's just Hashem revealing His godliness and His kindness to us. And it has nothing to do with how much we worked or how much we did or didn't deserve it. And those are also things that we spend time worrying about. Again, like I said, a healthy person. Many people, their life ends here. They don't care what, what, what's happening in, in the, you know, after they die. But if we are healthy human beings, that's something we think about. And in these seven categories, these are all things that we should learn to trust Hashem, says Rabbi uh, And like I said, if you didn't get all seven of them, that's fine. We're going to go through each one of them, almost each one in, its own, in a class of its own. I'm going to try to do, in a lesson of its own, I'm going to try to do two or three per lesson, but we'll see how how quickly we can go. For now, he summarizes. Ron, you want to read for us? Thus. Thus, all the concerns in, in which one relies on the creator may be exalted, fall into seven categories. One, right. those he's, that relate- summarizing here, right? Go ahead. Those that relate to one's own body. Two, those that relate to one's income and means of livelihood. Okay, health and wealth, keep going. Three, those that relate to one's wife, children, relatives, friends, and enemies. Those that we care about, okay? Or, or meaning, and care, remember, care doesn't mean we care uh, positively. Sometimes we care negatively, like our enemies. Okay, number four. Four, duties of the heart and limbs that affect one's, the oneself alone for, the benef for benefit or for harm. Okay, right? So this is, this is things that we do that affect us in the world to come. These are mitzvahs that we do with our heart. Go ahead, number five. Five external duties that affect others as well for benefit or for harm. Right, so that's the, uh, the, the mitzvahs that we do with our limbs or the ones that affect other people. Six, reward in the world to come in accordance with one's conduct in this world. So reward, spiritual revelation that we get in the world to come, that's a direct result of how we acted and things that we did in this world. And number seven. Seven, reward in the world to come, which the creator, may he be exalted, will bestow out of grace on his treasured ones and those who love him, as it is written. How great is your good that you have hidden away for those who fear you, that you do before men for those who take it take refuge refuge in you. Hey, thank you very much. Um, before we, before we keep going, Menachem wants to say hi to everybody. Menachem, you want to say hi? Hi, hi, hi Menachem. Hello. Say hi. Hello. Don't forget to say hi to Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Menachem. Hi, Menachem. Hi, Menachem. Menachem. There's also Steve. Menachem, sweetie. Who is the next? Wrap his brain around the fact that one of the people in the class is here in person. <laughs> whole bunch of babies so okay nice let's keep going so uh having explained stephanie go ahead I'm like a... having having explained the preference that make possible the reliance of one who trusts in god may he be exalted i must now follow them with the explanations of the proper way of relying reliance in each of the seven concerns in which one who trusts relies on God and on something besides him. Okay. Says Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, the Fabrengan is just beginning. We lay down now seven categories for which we have to have complete trust in Hashem. Right? What are we supposed to be trusting Hashem about? These seven categories. But he says, I'm going to go through each of them individually. And remember, we have lots of questions on these seven. And some of them we've begun to address already in prior, prior yeah. lessons, but some of them we haven't. So for instance, we already discussed the balance, but he's going to discuss the balance when it comes to each of these. When it comes to our health, for instance, right? That's the, which is number one on the list, I think, right? Number one? Yes, number one is health, right? Those, those what, he, what he calls, um, where is it? Here it is. Those that relate to one's own body, right? Health, we're going to talk about how much should I be doing as a human being? How much should I just be trusting in Hashem, right? Like we said, the, the, the famous balance that we struggle with every single day. 
Does God just want me to sit on the couch while yeah. an, an, an illness ravages my body, heaven forbid? I just say, oh, if that's Hashem's will, that's Hashem's will. So I don't even go to the doctor. Or does Hashem want me to say, oh, the doctor has full control and I just have to trust the doctor. No, we have to learn to trust Hashem, but also do whatever we can. So we're going to do that balance and that discussion and that fabrengen in each one of these seven categories. We're going to do them one at a time over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're already at five here, close to a minion. So for today, I, I know it's been a very short class, but thank you all for joining us for Faith and Trust in God. And see you all next week, God willing, at 7 p.m. Um, so...